All right, PB changes. Huge changes for next patch. Right now on PB. Which maybe some of them are going to go through. Maybe some of them are not. But also... But also the fact that this is a world patch, right? So whatever, like next patch is gonna be world patch. So Riot is trying to, uh, I guess, do the final pushes into what they want uh, the world's meta to look like, right? Now obviously some things are gonna change. Like maybe there's a world where they put a Nasus or a Gardener in because of what's happening right now in LT LTK. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. This is not the final uh, patch, right? So NAR is going to get mini base AD increased by 3 and mega base is going to be the same. So mega base AD on NAR is already like one of the highest in the game, right? But in any case, like mini base AD, this is like, it makes like, this is Ra trying to push NAR to be at world's meta. NAR is always like a pro bound champion. They don't really balance him around solo queue. They balance him more about pro play presence. And buffing base AD is really good for pro because it's basically lane bully buff. That's why people pick NAR in the first place, right? Like it helps in matchups like Renekton NAR. Which is usually where people pick Nar. I don't really care about this buff. I mean, it kind of makes sense. I guess Raj just wants Nar to be at Worlds. That's pretty much TLDR. Jarum buff, 1% target HP on Passu. So, the problem with this is that I think this is a massive mistake. So, number one thing is that Riot often, in the past, always buffs Jarum Passu by 1% up. Then Jarum turns out to be OP and they nerf it by 1% down. Continuous cycle of... It just repeats itself all the time. Number two, why I don't think this is like a good idea, is because I think Jarvan is already really good. I, I, I like, like at least like, you know, Jarvan was not played for God knows how long, then Augurine came on EOS like that past month or two, starts playing Jarvan out of nowhere. And now like at least in EU, it's very popular. I think the champion is totally strong enough to be played. I think like he has his uses. Don't really see why they would like buff him because this is like a really big buff. I think it's probably gonna make him OP. And I think if this buff goes through, probably gonna see a lot of Jarvan at Worlds, I would assume. Then we have Jax, our passive base damage up by 10 uh, at rank 2 and rank 3. I don't think this is a massive Jax buff. Uh, sorry, 20 at rank 3. I don't see how this is like a massive Jax buff at all. Uh, for hitting any target unchanged, uh, for each target beyond the first one, uh, bigger base value. So basically TLDR is that you get more armor and MR now as Jax if you hit multiple people, like two or more. And then the R is going to do a little bit more damage at 11 or 16. Personally, it seems like a very small buff to Jax. I don't think this like makes or breaks the character. This is a very small buff, IMO. Then we have Rel nerf. So they finally decided to take a look at Rel after she's been OP for God knows how many months. Of course, they're not touching their favorite baby Nautilus, Loana, and uh, Braum, I guess. None of these are getting really anything here, right? Only Rel. 4% more less mass on speed. So actually, I have to Google here because I don't know how Rel e exactly works. Like, what is this? Is this per level scaling or is this per ability scaling? And what spell does Rel max first? I have no clue. So this seems to be, I guess, per level scaling. And what do we know the max order on Rel? What do pros max on Rel? Because I have no clue if, like, if she maxes this last, then, like, I don't see what this does anything, right? Like, what does this do? I assume she doesn't max it first, maybe she maxes this second. So, I guess, um, he maxes second. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess, I guess this hits her at, like, level 9 onwards. But it's, like, 4% MS. Is this really gonna make a huge difference? Not really. Like, people are still gonna pay well, right? So, all the champion changes, IMO, like... I'm gonna sneeze. Like Jarvan and Nar are fine. Like they're pretty big. <laughs> oh, fuck. But Jax and Rel are kind of whatever. And then all pros are maxing E first. Okay, we have some we have some different opinions here in chat. I have no clue if people are lying and who's right. So here we have the big item changes. So a lot of ADC nerfs and some AP items changes. So number one is BT, who is an OP item, 100%. Life still down by 18, from 18 to 15%. Overshield down 165 to 315. Linear from level 8 to 18, from level 1 to 18. So this, I believe, makes it a little bit worse to rush BT, which is a huge Draven and Misfortune nerf. Right? I mean, yeah, this item is going to be for sure worse. I definitely think people are still probably buying this in late game. I don't really like the item will still probably be good late game. But this definitely a big nerf, especially as first item. 
That's how I see it. But a nerf is a nerf, right? Like, Misfortune is going to be really sad. This is a pretty big Misfortune nerf. Immortal Shieldbow. So this one, I don't understand. So Immortal Shieldbow will go from 320, 720 to 400, 700. So bigger shield early, worse, a little bit worse late game. Overall, I would say whatever. And then for range champions, it's going to be 0.x melee. So this means in translation 320 to 560. So the TLDR here is that Immortal Shieldbow is the same item for range for melee champions. So Yasuo Yon are probably the only uh, real champs that buy this. I don't really remember which other melee champion even buys this. Maybe like Viego sometimes. Probably not though. And um, yeah, every range champ is going to be Giga Sat with this nerf. Because they're nerfing Shieldbow and they're nerfing BT. Because usually when you play a range champion and you're like three or four items deep into your build, you're choosing between which lifestyle item do I want? Do I want Shieldbow or BT? Now that both of them are nerfed, it makes it even harder to decide which one you want, in my opinion. GP, I guess GP might buy this, yeah, true. GP is a melee champ that could buy Shieldbow. So overall, um, personally, okay, so here's my personal opinion. I don't think Immortal Shieldbow really needs a range modifier. I, I personally think this, uh, like, Immortal Shieldbow, to me, is way more, like, it's like a designed item for range champions in the first place. So I don't really see why this item would need a range melee modifier. I also don't see why this item would be considered too strong on ADCs or something. I think it does its job perfectly. If anything, what I think should happen is they should probably buff the stats a little bit and make the shield a little bit weaker for everybody. That's what I think would be the best play for Immortal Shieldbow. So here, I don't really understand why they would be nerfing this item. Like, BT nerf, I totally get the item is for sure OP. Immortal Shieldbow, I have a hard time understanding. Then we have a Ludens change. So Ludens Companion is going to be 50 gold cheaper, losing 5 haste for 5 AP. I mean, personally, I think this is a nerf. Uh, I don't know how... Like, it's, it's like... Roughly the same item anyway. I think the change is not really that big anyway. And if you are a Ludens champion, you're probably still gonna buy Ludens. So I don't think this is like a big change whatsoever. But I would much rather have 5 AP, uh, 5 haste than 5 AP. And 50 gold being cheaper is like whatever. So to me, this kind of feels like a small nerf, but at the same time, it doesn't do anything. So if you're Zoe, if you're Victor, if you're Syndra and you wanna buy this item, you're still buying it. Overall, I don't really see what Rout is trying to achieve with this change, but here it is. Shadow Flame is gonna get a change. So Amplifier below X amount of health it goes now to 40%. So it's gonna trigger faster. So that's a buff. Amplifier percent is gonna be 1.2 non-dots and 1.25 dots. So that means if your champion has dots, it's worse, I guess. That's kind of whatever. Which champion even buys this that has dots, right? Because like, for example, LeBlanc is an, a champion that likes this item, doesn't have dots. Akali is a champion that likes this item, doesn't really have dots. I guess if you buy like Lianji and Shadow Flame or Ludens, then there's dots, right? I suppose. Overall, I think this is like whatever. Magic Pen going up by 3 and AP going down by 5. I mean, personally, like, I think the item is better here. Like, to me, um, to me, I, I think the item is better for sure. In champions that want to buy Shadow Flame, uh, yeah, just makes it a little bit better. However, I still think majority of champions will not be buying this item. I still think this item is kind of bad. Don't really see how this changes much. But Shadow Flame is, has always been a good low elo item, so good job to low elo players. You guys get a better item. Then we got Storm Search. Deal X target health to trigger. Um, 25%. So now you're going to only need to do 25% of damage to trigger the passive which I think is a massive buff. That means like Syndra might do like WQ and trigger this item. This is like a massive buff. Damage modifier is going to be 1x, so more damage to Shadow Flame. So here it says innate speed. So that, I assume the move speed on the item is going to go from 8% to 5. Good chain triad. I am a big fan of move speed on items being capped to 5% besides a certain ex exceptions like Phantom Dancer. So good job. This item should have never had 8% move speed. 5% is much more comparable and good job. It's now same as Cosmic. And Magic Pen up by 5. So, okay. There is no way to really like... This is just like really big buffs to Storm Search, honestly. I honestly think maybe some items... Uh, sorry, maybe some champions are gonna be buying this um, in high even. Like, Storm Search is 
technically not a bad Cinder item. It's not a bad LeBlanc item. Like, honestly, Shadow Flame Storm Surge boss, I mean, good LeBlanc boss, right? Also, Akali. Like, these are the, the champions that really get targeted with these buffs. But yeah, I think, like, Storm Surge buff looks pretty good. Trinity Force, on hit speed, 20 always to 30 melee, 15 range, and attack speed down by 3%. Again, to me, I don't see why this they would need to do this. I, I, I'm personally in the same boat with Trinity Force as Immortal Shield Bow. This item is totally fine on range and melee. I don't really see why it would need to be nerfed. I get it was like popular at some point to buy like Trinity on Vayne and Trinity on Ash. I believe those are the only two ADCs besides Smolder. So those three are the only ones that uh, buy Trinity Force, right? I don't think there's any other rain champion that really buys Trinity. So the ch three champions here are being affected. Maybe Kindred, four, I guess. Maybe four champions are being affected here. But at the same time, I mean, 10 more move speed for melee? Come on, like, really? Like, Nasus is enjoying this. I don't know, like, there's a lot of... Oh, Ezreal, true. Ezreal is also a champion. So I guess five. And Quirky, six. True, true, true. But they're like, like, okay. I mean, certain melee champions really love this buff. Like, 10 more move speed? Like, fuck yeah, right? But again, why do they need to do this? I don't get this. Like, Immortal Shield Bow and Treaty Force, I don't agree with those changes at all. The rest, I kind of see, like, especially the BT. BT is way too OP. Then we have Fleet. So Fleet Dispatch got massively nerfed. Now they're deciding to approach the situation differently. So I believe this is a revert. So I think these were the old numbers to Fleet. So revert numbers on base healing. Modifier is 0.6 on range which results into 6 to 78 stat growth scaling. Range base AD scaling goes down by 4%. Range AP scale goes down by 2%. Minion uh, healing modifier is now 0 0.15 always. So range champions will heal a little bit more, but because this number is lower, they will heal less anyway. While melee champions are going to be healing a little bit less on minion, but that doesn't matter. Fleet, you heal a lot when you hit the range, right? When you hit a range jump. So the speed value will go back to 20 for melee, still 15 for range, and the speed duration is going to be unchanged. So TLDR is that Fleet is a completely dead rune on any range character. I don't see why you would ever play this. I think people will slowly start swapping to PTA, Conqueror, Grasp even. There is no way you play this on any melee character. Now for range character, this, uh, sorry, on range characters. So for melee characters, this is going to be better. Like me melee characters are going to be fine. Yon and Yasuo are going to be back to playing it. This is technically like Akali is pretty happy because she's like one of the rare melee characters that can play this, right? Nasus can go now back to playing fleet. There's some champions, right? Like GP, Trindamer, whatever. The problem I have is that... Uh, so, okay. First thing is first. The 100% range champions abuse this rune 20 times more than melee champions. So I think a range modifier on this rune makes sense. Honestly. However, 0 0.6 just seems to be such a bad number that this rune is not going to be viable on range characters. That's how I see it. I think a range modifier actually makes sense on this rune. Because every time this rune gets nerfed, Yasuo and Yon and other melee champions like Akali and God knows what... Suffer because of ADC champs. ADC champions abuse this rune way too much. Everybody knew this rune was very OP for a very long amount of time. Um, so range modifier, I think, does make sense. But yeah, these numbers just seem to be way too, too shit. I, I don't really, like, like what? Where, where are we going with this? A lot of ADC nerfs, right? A lot of ADC nerfs. So ADC ch ADCs I have slowly gotten a lot of their items nerfed. Kraken and Shiv got nerfed. I think Shiv is still fine. I think Kraken is pretty bad. Borg just got nerfed on range specifically because people realize they can rush Borg too much on ADCs. Infinity is still good. LDR is still good. Uh, Mortar Miner is still good. But now Beat is getting a nerf. Shiv is getting a nerf. Um, yeah, ADCs are slowly running out of good items, in my opinion. Slowly. However, a champ like Jean still has like Shiv Rapid Infinity build. He's gonna be fine. Besides, Fleet is gonna be a lot worse for Jean. Really, really, like, really curious to see if, like, people are just gonna start playing grass, maybe, on, like, ADCs. Probably not, though, but... And then, lastly, we have, uh, turret fortification. 
So turret fortification is gonna go uh, to 85%. I don't think this does anything. This is Ra trying to say, hey, we're trying to make lane swaps worse. So like too many lane swaps don't happen at worlds. It makes sense, however, Riot, this is not the way to fix it. People don't care. Even if you make turret 99% tanky, people are still gonna swap. The point of the swap is to dodge laning phase the first three, four levels of the, of the matchup bot because that changes the dynamic of bot lane matchups a lot because you survive those levels and you don't care that you go 1k gold down, okay? That's a trade you're willing to take because you have a shit matchup bot anyway or whatever, right? So yeah, this is not gonna, like, this is not gonna uh, really stop pros from lane swapping. And that's... Uh, I'll be here for the next patch. I assume there's going to be a lot more changes. Um, Reap ADCs, I guess. Lastly, I want to say that, like, the cycle always repeats itself. Number one is Riot buffs ADCs. Number two is Botlin becomes Turbo OP. Number three is instead of nerfing support, they keep the nerf ADC back. And then number four is, like, people will complain, especially in lower ranks, or oh, ADC feels shit to play. And support is going to be OP. I don't know why they always do the same cycle, like can we nerf support for once? Probably not though, because they don't want the player base on the roll to drop too much. GG.